Okay, we'll get to the main subject of this video in a little bit, but let me gush about doors for a second, because I doubt I'll have another chance to do so later. You know, making a video about a Roblox game that has nothing to do with FNAF really wasn't on my 2023 bingo card, but man, does it feel good to finally talk about doors. My history with Roblox is one that's kind of scattered all over the place. I never made an account when I was a kid, and only started occasionally messing around with some of the games a few years back. I was never super into any of the games I played, but it was always fun messing around in whatever insane obby or cart ride game with me and my friends. However, that changed late last year when I discovered Doors. I had heard about the game a ton before I actually played it, but I knew literally nothing about it going in. Other than one, it was a horror game, and two, people on YouTube could not shut up about it. So after a lackluster experience playing Rainbow Friends for the first time one evening, me and a couple buddies decided to finally play Doors, and I very quickly fell in love with it. The amount of charm and passion the game has is so apparent, and other than the player models, it feels nothing like a Roblox game at all. I've heard a lot of people compare the gameplay of Doors to Spooky's Jumpscare Mansion, which I haven't played myself, but yeah, I see the similarities. Both games consist of a series of rooms you have to walk through and weird monsters show up along the way. What sets doors apart is not only is the game multiplayer, but the rooms you go through are randomly generated each time you play, making each run different and exciting. I have played this game for hours at this point, and I'm still not bored with it, even after knowing pretty much everything there is to know about doors. That's a point I really want to make apparent here. Even after the initial scare factor of the game wore off for me, the core gameplay mechanics are so strong that it doesn't bother me in the slightest. That's why I love the original FNAF game so much as well. The gameplay can hold its own once the scares become old and you understand how everything works. So I thought Doors was good. Great even. Easily my favorite Roblox game ever made. Even if the bar is pretty low. But oh my god, the new Hotel Plus update for the game made me love everything about it even more. Tons of animations were improved to make the various monsters in the game have so much more visual personality to them. New rooms were added that make the different areas in the hotel that much more interesting to explore. Especially the basement segments, with their new coat of paint and smaller vent sections scattered around the area. The new ending to the game is leagues better than it was before making it actually feel like a challenge, unlike how it was previously. The shop added after the door 50 figure boss fight is easily one of the most charming things in the entire game, with the new skeleton key and cross items being great additions to the pool. The satisfaction you get when you use the cross on an oncoming rush or ambush is literally one of the best feelings in the entire world. And God, the music. The music! The OST was already good before, but some of the new additions are genuinely fantastic. I've had Jeff's shop music track stuck in my head ever since I heard it for the first time, and the music during the ending is top-notch <laughs> stuff. Let's see it! Sure hope nothing- uh-oh. Oh no, Walter. Watch out! Oh my god, I fought figures the goat. Goodbye! This is so cool. Walter, why is it upper taking? Oh. Woo! Nothing will beat the feeling of playing Doors, or an update of Doors, for the very first time. The way the game is set up, it's recommended you go in completely blind, and learn how to play the game through trial and error. This means you're probably gonna die to every monster at least once before you understand how they work. But the game explains how to avoid dying to them every time you're killed by one. So you go into each new run of Doors with a little more knowledge than you had last time. I sadly don't have my first time playing Doors recorded. But trust me, we were all spooked playing it for the first time. Not knowing what could show up around any corner made me genuinely terrified of this Roblox game when I first played it. Thankfully, however, I did record my first couple times playing the new update, so I do have some of those reactions to show you all. My favorite one has to be my reaction to the new entity, Dupe. In the version of Doors before this update, you never ever had to worry about what room you were in currently at any time. There were no true branching paths or monsters that relied on your knowledge of the room number you were in. However, in this new update, that all changed with the introduction of Dupe. In random rooms, there will sometimes be two different doors you can enter. However, these are not branching paths. One of the doors is actually an entity waiting for you to walk into it so it can jump scare you and take around half your health. The way to avoid Dupe is pretty easy. Just pay attention to the door numbers as you play, and choose the door that would come after the door you just entered. Pretty easy, but it can sometimes get a bit hard to remember door numbers after being attacked by a bunch of entities and stuff. As you can probably guess, on our first playthrough of the new update, we had no idea that these branching paths were actually entities. Which led to this fantastic clip. What? Branching paths? What? Yeah. Yeah, 13, we have 13, 14. 14. Oh. Well, uh, go 13, go 13, go 13. Alright, I guess we go 13. Whoa! 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 Whoa. 
Okay. Well, this is awkward. Get duped by dupe. What the fuck? <laughs> Whoa! <Okay. laughs> See, this is why I wish I had our first time playing the game recorded. It was full of stuff like this. The magic of a game like Doors is that every single time it gets updated, it's gonna feel like a new experience because you never know what to expect. Such as this clip where I ran into glitch for the first time in the new update. What the fuck? That gave me a heart attack. Oh, oh my god. What? Oh my god. I, what? I had no super loud scream reaction or anything, but trust me, my heart stopped when it showed up on screen. It was a really good scare. Doors is genuinely one of my favorite games out right now, which trust me, is something I did not think I would be saying when I first started playing it. But it has yet to get old, and if they keep adding more and more updates with new rooms, entities, and eventually floors, I could see this game being popular for a very long time. I'd love to do more videos on doors in the future if this does well, so we'll see how it goes. Anyway, enough gushing. Now let's talk about one of the worst experiences I've ever had indoors. It's time to talk about the Nightmare Room 50. Okay, a little context for my core audience, since I don't really know how many of you have played or watched someone play Doors yet. Door 50 is a bit of a boss fight for the halfway point in the game. You're thrown into a huge library, and you're introduced to the main antagonist of the first floor, Figure. Figure is this really cool looking, fleshy monster with no eyes, and his new animations in the update make me love him even more. He was a bit stiff looking before, but now he runs around with these super wobbly arms. It looked really good. Anyway, the whole gimmick of the boss fight is that you have to find your way out of the room without being caught by Figure. Like I said before, Figure doesn't have eyes, so the only way he's gonna tell where you are in the room is by his crazy good sense of hearing. You wanna stay low to the ground by crouching and slowly make your way around the library. To escape the library, you have to collect special books on the shelves that will randomly correspond to a different shape. Each of these shapes corresponds to a different number. You then use these numbers to input a code on a lock on the exit door, which will then unlock and let you escape the library. Pretty straightforward in concept, but you can often get in pretty bad situations here if you're not paying attention. The final aspect of this boss fight has to do with the closets. Normally, entering a closet is a pretty safe bet. You can chill in one for a few seconds and be safe from pretty much anything. However, in both of the figure boss fights, this isn't the case. Entering a closet here should be the literal last course of action once all other options of survival are off the table. This is because when you go in a closet one of these sections, if figure finds out and walks up to the closet, it will trigger a mini game where you need to control your heartbeat using the left and right mouse buttons. This mini game is pretty annoying, and a small slip up here can be the death of an entire run. Remember this, because trust me, it will be important later. All right, allow me to paint you a picture of what happened that fateful run that made the Room 50 figure boss fight an absolute nightmare, and the miraculous way we actually survived and escaped the room. It all started when we figured out what the rooms were. If you don't know, in the new Doors update, there's a hidden easter egg that leads you to a full recreation of the game that inspired Doors directly. That game is called Rooms. It's a similar idea with similar entity mechanics, but the environment is a grey office building, and it goes on for a thousand doors instead of a hundred doors. It's a pretty cool novelty to try out every once in a while, and me and my friends wanted to give it a try. So we set it on a run with the sole purpose of getting all three of us to the rooms. Now. We didn't know this beforehand, since we were going in almost completely blind, but when you get to the rooms, it actually revives everyone who had died up until that point. Keep that in mind while I tell this story, because we're under the impression here that everyone needs to make it there alive to experience the easter egg. We had already lost a run prior to this one because of door 50 shenanigans, so we were all a bit ticked off when we finally got back to it. The run started pretty normal. We were all scattered about looking for the books, so we could just get out and keep moving on with the game. However, it didn't take long for some dumb shit to happen. Me and Acid were on the top level of the library, while Cam was on the bottom level of the library. I guess because both of us were up here, the noise levels were probably a bit higher, so Figure was making his way up the stairs. In a panic, I hopped in a closet, which was a huge mistake looking back at the footage, and I probably could have easily moved over to the other side of the room instead. This one decision put a whole bunch of L's into motion. Because immediately after I got in the closet, Figure found Acid and pretty quickly killed her. Now we all still had a revive to use at this point, so one death from each of us was fine. We just couldn't have someone die twice. After she died, I waited in the closet for a bit longer to make sure that Figure was gone. As I was about to exit the closet, the prompt for the Heartbeat minigame showed up on screen. So now I'm out of the closet with the minigame still on screen which if you couldn't tell, is definitely not supposed to happen. 
So I start doing the minigame out of the closet, figure walks over, and immediately kills me. So now Acid and I only have one life left, and Cam still has two. Pretty bad situation. But there was still a pretty good chance we could win if we played our cards right. Watching back this footage, we shit on door 50 a lot here, which I'm pretty sure is just because we were already pissed off from losing the last time. But I just wanna say, I don't actually hate door 50 at all. Door 100 is better for sure, but we were just mad here saying random shit. Or at least I was, I can't speak for the others, I guess. Anyway, I revive and make the actual rookie mistake of not crouching down immediately. So because I'm just walking in the open, figure hears me right away and makes a beeline right towards me. I realize this pretty fast and hop into another closet, just hoping I can quickly do the heartbeat minigame and move on with the boss fight. Little did I know, I would be locked in this closet for a lot longer than just one minigame. Little did I know that I was actually trapped here forever. So yeah, I have no idea what happened here, but for some reason, the way that figure was positioned put him in a spot where as long as I was still in the closet, he could keep triggering the heartbeat minigame over and over and over again. I had to do the minigame a total of 10 times in the same closet before I was able to escape. And can I just say, I have no clue how I did this minigame 10 times in a row without messing up once. I am typically so bad at it, but for some reason, my alpha gamer mode kicked in and I was able to do it all perfectly. Maybe if it went over 10 times, I would have died, but all that matters is that I somehow lived. So, how did I get out of this situation? Well, if I was in single player, this would have pretty much been game over. However, if Cam or Acid got close enough or made enough noise, Figure would have a chance to get unstuck and try to kill them instead of me. During around the fifth or so time doing the minigame, Cam was successfully able to distract Figure and lure him away, but somehow he immediately came right back and I had to do the minigame again. Cam, because he's over there. Okay. He's like hey, clipped make, into a fucking- I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just gonna make noise. Oh my god, you need to get him out of here. Yeah, that's a good idea, that's a good idea. Okay, okay, he's, he's good. Okay, well... If I screw uh, up once, I die. I'm like crying right now. This is- I'm so- oh my god. Can I'm I... done playing this game, by the way. I'll die here. I'm just Okay, I got, I got him, I got him, I got him, oh, I got him. Oh, thank fuck. Wait, is he moving back? <laughs> After the tenth time doing the minigame, Cam was successfully able to lure Figure out of the corner he was stuck in, and I was actually able to leave the closet. Somehow, the nightmare heartbeat softlock hell I was stuck in was no more. After that, we were all able to progress through the rest of the room normally, but not without me having to get into another closet and doing the minigame again. Thankfully, I didn't get softlock this time, and we were able to beat the room with everyone still alive. Not only was this the first time we had ever actually successfully left this room with all three of us alive, we somehow did it on the hardest door 50 we had ever experienced. While this whole situation was incredibly stressful, actually beating it was such a good feeling. We also made it to the rooms and got to experience that for the first time as well. So this was a pretty legendary run, all things considered. And that was the Nightmare Door 50. Easily one of the craziest experiences I've ever had playing doors. Once again, I might do more doors content in the future if the demand is there. But even if this is the only video I make about the game, it was a fun one to talk about for sure. Roblox as an engine has so much potential that we are finally starting to see be properly utilized. And I can't wait to see what's next for both Roblox Horror and Doors itself. Unless, unless it's all just more Rainbow Friends clones, then yeah, I'll probably just pass on that one. <laughs> anyway, I've been a yeah, and I'll see you all next time.